Hi everybody, TJ Mac Vintage Cards here, and today I'm doing episode 5 of Through the Cardboard, and I'm profiling the Hall of Fame third baseman with a funny nickname. And no, it's not Mike Schmidt. Before guys like Mike Schmidt, though, George Brett, and Eddie Matthews, Brooks Robinson, Chipper Jones, and Wade Boggs. We had this guy right here, Harold Pie Trainer. Now, what's really interesting about Harold Pie Trainer is that up into the 1970s, it was he was considered the greatest third baseman to play. Don't believe me? The 1972 Kellogg's 3D All Times Great Shot set showed Pi Trainer as the greatest third baseman of all time. So did the 1976 Top Set. This is after Eddie Matthews had already retired. Now I know Kellogg's and Tops are hardly the authority on judging the all time greats, but it's very interesting that a player whose career ended in 1937 was considered to be the greatest at his position for such a long time, and now, frankly, He's probably not even in the top 10. Now let's admit it. We're also a little bit uncomfortable lumping in Pie Trainer with the likes of Honus Wagner, Babe Ruth, Cy Young, Rogers Hornsby, and the others who are arguably the greatest at their position. The third base position has really seen so many great stars in the past few generations and didn't have as many greats in the generations before. And I'm sure there's gonna be many more to come so Pi Trainer will likely become even more forgotten. Now before history forgets about old Pi, I'd like to talk a little bit about him. The right-handed batter could really swing the stick. By the time he was 21, he had broken into the majors with the Pirates. He became a regular by 1922 and went on to a career that ultimately landed him in the Baseball Hall of Fame. In his 17 seasons, he had a combined 320 with 58 home runs, 164 triples, 1,273 RBIs, and 158 stolen bases. He only made two All-Star games, which seems odd for an all-time great, but he did receive MVP votes in eight seasons. Now, from 1934 to 1939, he also served as the Pittsburgh manager. In many of those years, he was the player manager. Now the big question is, where on earth did he get a silly nickname like Pi? Well, the writer James Four described it in a biography of Trainer when he said that as a youth, he always ordered Pi when he and his friends would gather at a family store owned by Ben Dangle, at an older boy who occasionally umpired their games, and he brought them home for a bite to eat and to hang out. In an attempt at needling, he supposedly began calling Harold Pieface, which ultimately stuck in a shortened version. In fact, this is often the story that Pie Trainer would tell of where his name came from. But this story has been disputed, and the more likely story comes from Trainer's father himself in 1932. The elder Trainer was a typesetter for the Boston Transcript. His job required him to have a fierce attention to detail as he got the press set up for each edition of the paper. As we recalled, his son received the nickname of Pi from him, and it wasn't because of pastries, but rather because of a very dirty face. One day when he returned home from work, he discovered his young son had been playing in the garden, and as a result had his face color covered with grime and mud. He told the boy, you're a regular pie, and before I kiss you, your mother will have to wash away about a ton of dirt from your face. Now, for anyone wondering what his father meant by pie, and it wasn't P-I-E pie, it was P-I pie, and they should look no further than the world of typesetting. Pie, P-I, was what printers called the jumbled mass of type that started before they organized it and set it up for the print run. In other words, it was a real mess. Now, the cuteness of the story is another reason why, as an adult, Pie Trainer probably preferred telling other versions of the story. After all, how many grizzled star third basemen in the big leagues wanted to tell curious reporters 
that the reason why they had such a unique nickname was because of an affectionate father gently chiding his child before giving him a kiss. This is episode five of Through the Cardboard. Everybody have a great day, and we'll talk again soon.